Hello again and welcome to another chemistry lesson. We're looking at alkene reactions and in this lesson I am going to look at a specific type of alkene reaction called hydrogenation. Hydrogenation and you might be saying what on earth are you talking about? Well, it's fairly simple. Hydrogenation simply means I have an unsaturated unsaturated um, carbon molecule um, or organic molecule and I want that is my reactant and I want to produce a saturated saturated organic molecule now what's the difference between saturated and unsaturated well unsaturated do not have the maximum number of hydrogens per carbon saturated do which means obviously we need to add hydrogen hydrogen and I wonder I was on purpose of writing it like this hydrogenation literally means I am adding a hydrogen to an unsaturated compound to make it a saturated compound that's lit literally what it is okay so um, an example of this would be in in real life in actual fact what happens in the industry is that we humans have uh, grown a liking to saturated fatty acids okay saturated fatty acids taste nice okay unsaturated fatty acids well they also taste nice but not as nice as, as saturated fatty acids so in the um, in the industry we have a process called hydrogenation where we literally add hydrogen to unsaturated fats which occur more uh, frequently in nature and we then produce a nicer tasting product um, that has all its organic molecules and now has the maximum number of hydrogens I find it fascinating that adding hydrogen makes something taste better don't you? Okay, well let me show you an example of this. Now, um, fatty acids are um, um, are carboxylic carboxylic acids, uh, so it's it's not necessarily the alkenes and alkanes that we are going to show here, but the process is is very similar. Okay, so if I were to take uh, uh, alkene and I'm going to use nonene so since there's nine carbons and I use nonene because I know that nonene is a gas uh, sorry a liquid one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight nine now you will never get a nine carbon string in a reaction I just want to use it because it makes um, I know it is a liquid so it, um, it makes nice sense when explaining it okay so you can see these first two carbons do not have usually the one on the end can have three the one in the uh, in the middle part gets two like these ones get two hydrogens each and this one here at the end gets three so this one is definitely unsaturated so if I add to it a hydrogen okay I can produce a saturated okay saturated molecule for three six one more and uh, this one lit literally looks like that okay so obviously and this um, is already a balanced equation fairly simply because they still the same number of carbons and uh, and the only thing that we did is these two hydrogens the a diatomic molecule is represented like this and by the way this whole thing is called the structural uh, reaction formula and then if this bond here gets broken okay, if somehow we can break one of these bonds then we'll have an uh, uh, additional electron here that would re that would bind to that electron or share with that electron and and the other electron here would share with this one's electron okay so we literally have those those two coming in these two positions okay so we have it's a balanced equation 
Okay, what are the conditions? That's quite important when we do reactions. What are the initial conditions? What do I need to do in order for this reaction to actually occur? Well, one thing you need to know is that if I need to break a bond, I need energy. It doesn't just break just by boiling hydrogen uh, through. This is a liquid, this is a gas, okay, and this is a liquid again. It doesn't just happen by boiling this gas through this liquid and they just in, um, they just react. So it could be like that, but um, alkenes aren't that reactive. So even though they're more reactive than alkanes, alkanes are very happy with their, uh, their single bond carbons and sharing with the hydrogens. Um, they're more reactive, but they're not that reactive. So we need to add energy to break that bond. To add energy into any system, we can just use heat. But now, nonin would would boil at about 170 degrees Celsius, which means we'll just have gas or smoke at that at at that stage. And even though they will react to produce this, um, the the temperatures are not uh, conducive to make this reaction. Uh, uh, very viable. So instead of doing that, we could use a, a catalyst. Now what a catalyst does is it reduces the amount of energy that we need for this reaction to occur by producing an intermediate product. So for example, these two won't immediately react with one another. This one will first react with the platinum to produce an intermediate product. That intermediate product will react with the hydrogen to produce the final product and platinum will again just be on its own. Okay, so um, that is what a, a catalyst does, but, but more about that later. For now, all you need to know is that we can use a, a catalyst and in this case we use platinum will work good as a catalyst. However, how do we get now this to react with that, okay? How do I get sufficiently the platinum to get in contact with this liquid? I can just drop it in and um, and stir it. It that would work. But what would work even better is if I can mix it better with one another. And for that, I will need a solvent. Okay, I will need a solvent. This is fairly thick. Okay. Because it's thick, it's difficult to mix this this liquid with the platinum. So what we'd rather do is get a solvent, uh, and there are two types of solvents we get. We get polar solvents and nonpolar solvents. Now, don't 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 get freaked out. What on earth is a solvent? It's simply a liquid. That I dissolve something into but not everything dissolve into everything for example you cannot dissolve water into oil and oil into water why not because the one is polar the other one is non-polar polar means the particles have charges like we've looked at water um, the water particle has a, a more positive charge and a more negative charge on the other end okay that's actually the other way around okay and that makes water polar. And any other molecule that is polar can um, dissolve in water. Okay. Um, Nonpolar molecules are molecules that do not necessarily display such a strong um, uh, uh, difference in the molecule's um, um, polarity. And how would you know whether an, a molecule is polar or nonpolar? Well, you could look at the difference between the electron negativity. So, for example, um, here we have carbons and hydrogens react uh, in, a, in a compound. So, this molecule has carbons and hydrogens. So, we could take the difference between carbon and hydrogen, that is 2,5, is this one's electron negativity, 2,55. And hydrogen is 2,2. .2. The difference, therefore, is 0, 0,35. If this is less than 0, 0,4, it is defined. That's the definition of a polar um, molecule. So when the difference is less than 0, 0,4, less or equal to, I suppose, then it is a uh, sorry, a nonpolar, then it is a nonpolar molecule. So, in order for this to dissolve in a solvent, we need a nonpolar solvent. Now, an example of a great nonpolar sol uh, solvent is
Okay, hexane. Okay. Why hexane? Well, hexane for one is it, it um, um, has a low viscosity. Okay, it is very it is very fluent. If you think of petrol, that's octane. Octane um, is it, it's it's almost like a thin liquid. Now hexane is even a thinner liquid. So in other words, it's very nice to dissolve things into it. And um, it is nonpolar because it has carbon and hydrogen bonds. Hexane is a liquid at room temperature, so it it works ideal as a solvent. Um, for these type of situations. So hexane is a good solvent to use for this reaction and platinum is a metallic bond and metallic bonds are usually nonpolar. So this is great. We will dissolve the the platinum in the solvent. We will also dissolve the um, the alkane, sorry the alkene in the solvent and now in the end it will produce this alkane, this alkane, which is non-ane, non-ane because there's nine carbons, the non, and it's single bonds, so it's ane. But this non-ane will be mixed with the hexane. Okay, so non-ane is also a liquid, so it's also non-polar, but it will be mixed with hexane in the same. So how will we get rid of, and, and on top of that we'll also have the platinum still mixed in there as well. Okay, so we'll have in the end our product will be a solvent with platinum and nonane dissolved into that solvent. So how will we get rid of the platinum and the um, uh, and how will we get the nonane by itself? Well this is where the properties of alkanes come important. First, the platinum um, are literally an impurity in the solvent. Okay, so you'll literally just drain it with a thin membrane or sieve. So you will literally have um, have a funnel with um, with a filter and 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 pour your liquid through that filter, and it will catch the platinum the platinum in here not all of it but most of it will be um, you will be able to to take out now what comes out at the bottom will still be a mixture of these two liquids so how will you be able to get the nonane by itself okay well this is where as I said this is where the properties of these two come in handy because okay the shoot the shortest string of carbons means that the forces between the molecules are less. So you can see it's the same, it both are alkanes, but the longest string here means it's got stronger forces between the molecules. That means that this, the stronger forces have a higher boiling point, which means all I need to do is bring my solution that I have here to a boil and as soon as it's boiling okay the solvent which is hexane will evaporate that that will boil out first and as long as I keep it below the boiling point so I'll boil it until it stops boiling that's that's odd isn't it okay you can boil something until it stops boiling well it will stop boiling when the um, the hexane is finished and now in order to get it to boil again I will need to increase the temperature until I get to the boiling point of nonane okay so I'll boil it till it stops boiling that would mean that the hexane has has completely evaporated into a gaseous face and I'll only be left with the nonane so I find this fascinating it is really a wonderful um, wonderful reaction and, and, and a great explanation I think of a lot of topics how the solvents work and how um, uh, the uh, catalyst works so I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed learning it myself and also teaching it to you so um, uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next topic where we'll start looking at haloalkanes I lie it's called haloalkanes see you in that topic